The deep dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV provide both a fun side game to play as well as an alternate leveling path for your jobs. These dungeons create a save file for your character and see you climbing up an ever-changing roguelike set of encounters. The reason I love the deep dungeons is you don't need any gear to play inside them as your equipment is completely separate from the normal game world. At higher floors, you are set to a high level so you can use more of your job's abilities even if they are actually level 1 outside of the deep dungeon. In this video, we will cover both deep dungeons in the game, Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High, how to unlock them, and the strategies you need to survive them. Now, both deep dungeons will randomly create floors and present them to you with a boss floor every 10 floors. First, let's review the first deep dungeon you'll encounter, Palace of the Dead. Palace of the Dead can be used to level your jobs from 1 all the way up to 61 if you're so inclined. To unlock access, you'll need to complete the House That Death Built quest from Nojiro Marujiro in New Gridania. If you don't see it, keep in mind you must have first completed up to Into a Copper Hell in the main scenario quest line for this quest to appear. Enter Palace of the Dead by queuing up at the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain in Quarry Mill, South Shroud. Select Enter the Palace of the Dead, make a save file, and then Matched Party will partner you with random people, while Fixed Party is a party of your choosing, and only the party leader can do this. Palace of the Dead does not require a team composition of any kind, so any roles will work. Work. After every 10 floors, your save file will be updated and you can either queue for the next 10 floors or exit. Once you beat floor 50 in Palace of the Dead, you'll be able to start a new save at level 51. Typically, players will delete their save and re-queue repeatedly for floor 51 when leveling a job as it tends to have the fastest queue time with the highest output of experience. Now, boom, you're inside the palace. Here's what to do. You'll encounter random layouts and monsters along the way. A map in the top right tells you where everything is. But look at these babies here. One icon is the Cairn of Passage, which is your way to the next floor, and the other is the Cairn of Return used to revive teammates who die. Both will start out inactive and must be activated by killing a set number of mobs on that floor. You'll see them progress through a series of colors until they reach this light blue, meaning they are active. Once active, the Cairn of Passage will have a ring around it. If that ring goes dim, it means one of your party members is currently in combat and may need your help. The Cairn of Passage requires all players to stand inside of it to progress to the next floor. And remember, if anyone dies, you don't need to have a Phoenix Down or a Res. You can just go to the Cairn of Return and bring them back to life. Floors are loaded with traps, so be careful where you walk. If you ever see these beams appear from a trap, get ready for a fight. This is called a luring trap and will spawn monsters that aggro you all at once. You'll also be pacified and can step on landmines that deal almost all your health in one blow. You can also be turned into a toad for a short time. Throughout Palace of the Dead, you'll find lots of chests that you can open. The bronze chests contain consumables like potions. Silver chests contain upgrades for your Aether Pool arm and armor, which are your in-deep dungeon gear. So if you don't have a plus 99 red weapon or armor, make sure you grab these. In Palace of the Dead, you'll see all different colors of weapons for people that have progressed at different stages, with red and black being the highest plus 99 level of Aether Pool gear and armor. Your Aether Pool gear level is saved across all your jobs and save files inside deep dungeons. Silver chests in Palace of the Dead can sometimes explode, so be wary. Golden chests contain Pomanders, and these are the Palace of the Dead unique items that can only be used inside the deep dungeon. Your party has a shared pool of Pomanders that any player can use, so when you're looking at the inventory, this is a shared amount across your whole party. You can experiment with the different kinds of Pomanders, but I'll cover the important ones. If you ever see the Pox debuff on you and you start losing health over long periods of time, the Pomander of Purity will cleanse it for you. Pomander of Serenity removes any negative floor penalties. If you don't like it, get rid of it. Pomander of Witching is a clutch AoE polymorph that can save you if you get overrun. The Pomander of Rage turns you into a Manticore that will one-shot enemies unless the floor currently has a knockback penalty, in which case it will not do much damage. 
Pomander of Lust turns you into a ranged succubus that applies a stacking damage amplification debuff on the target, and this can be useful for clearing boss floors. Typically, you'll see one person in the party transform into the succubus, get five stacks of the debuff, and transform back for regular DPS. If you want to end any transformation early, you can click off the buff on your buff bar. You'll also find accursed horde coffers along the way that give you trimmed sacks that can be identified at the Expedition Bishop for random loot. Just stand still on the beacon and the chest will appear for you. And a couple tips before we move on. Try not to fight alone. It's easier for everyone if you drag your monsters back to the group for faster killing. Not every monster needs to be killed to progress forward. Once the Cairn of Passage is active, you are free to move to the next floor. You only get real experience after every 10 floors, so if you die your whole party wipes beforehand, you will get nothing, so keep this in mind. Food bonuses and gear bonuses to experience don't work on the final lump sum of experience gain from deep dungeons, and this is just to save you the time of testing it. Now, Stormblood brought us the next deep dungeon, Heaven on High, that includes some new mechanics and improvements. To unlock access, you'll need to complete Knocking on Heaven's Door, given by Hamakaze in the Ruby Sea. You must have first completed up to and including Tide Goes In, Imperials Go Out in the main scenario questline, as well as beating Floor 50 of Palace of the Dead. To enter Heaven on High, speak to Kyusei in Crick in the Ruby Sea, nearest to the Anakoro Aetherite Crystal. Heaven on High functions much like Palace of the Dead with a few changes. Kill monsters to unlock the Cairn of Passage and move to the next floor. The Cairn of Return can bring party members back to life if they die. Many of the Pomanders inside Heaven on High will mirror those you saw in Palace of the Dead, with some new ones added into the mix. The Pomander of Petrification specifically will make the mobs on the current floor one-shottable for a short time. This can be used for clearing floors away from Magicite. Speaking of which, Heaven on High introduces Magicite, which have their own inventory spot and randomly drop from silver chests only. Once used, a Primal will be summoned that wipes the entire floor of enemies or does a large chunk of damage to the boss. You'll encounter open floor plans to help break up the monotony, though the Cairn of Passage works the same here. You'll also find adorable friends that grant buffs to those who stand near them. Heaven on High has Empyrean Aetherpool Arm and Armor, which is the same as the Palace of the Dead, but it is separate and must be leveled separately. Floor 21 plus can be queued for on a new save file, just like Floor 51 in Palace of the Dead. And lastly, both deep dungeons continue to higher floor levels with increasing difficulty. And generally, these high level floors are seen as challenges for you to progress through, but they're not necessary. Good luck in the deep dungeons, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you in the next one.